All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our fourth town hall meeting. I'm Bob Mahalik. I am our superintendent of schools. I am joined today by a great, great cast of administrators, uh, teachers, support staff that are working very, very hard to uh, to get us through these very difficult, challenging times um, and get us to the other side of this. And uh, we are looking so forward to just having a, a great year, uh, understanding that we're up against some great challenges and that you as mom, dad, guardian, have some decisions here to be made that you probably never thought you'd have to make. Do I send my kid back to a school? that maybe you or your children don't necessarily feel safe uh, with all that's going on with the virus um, and how's the best for my child to continue uh, their education and most importantly uh, continue the, the, you know, the rigorous education that you've come to expect uh, and deserve from the Crestwood School District. So I'm, I'm very, very proud of the efforts that we've put in. I'd like to introduce to you uh, our, our team. I'll start with Mr. Kevin Serre. He is our Fairview principal um, and just about everything else in between that. Our secondary campus principal, as well as our principal of the Cyber Academy, Mr. John Gorham. I see our supervisor of behavioral health and special programs, Mrs. Beth Ann Harris Owens. I see uh, uh, one of our amazing teachers, uh, Mrs. Chris, she's our secondary business teacher, also our FBLA uh, advisor, Mrs. Christy Labach. Uh, I see Mrs. Stephanie Otero. Uh, Stephanie is my assistant uh, who does so much for us. I see Mrs. Tracy Cormier, uh, the one that has really spearheaded getting our, uh, our town hall meetings and organizing them. And there's a lot to do as we've met with literally hundreds of parents and we're gonna continue to meet um, you know, uh, as many uh, parents as we can. And uh, I believe that's our entire team this morning. You know why I introduced Mr. Gorham as, um, as our uh, principal of the Cyber Academy, and that is a title that he holds. There is no way that Mr. Gorham can do this alone. And that's why our whole team and our whole district is, um, is behind this program. We currently have uh, about 500 students enrolled in the Crestwood Cyber Academy, that's kindergarten through 12th grade. Uh, I've announced that at the end of tomorrow, we're gonna hold uh, off uh, future enrollments. Now that doesn't mean we won't take them. That means we have to stop because there's a lot of work on the part of all the administrators of making sure that we have, um, that we have all of our scheduling and staffing uh, done up to that point. So that is why we gave tomorrow as the deadline. We're aware that not everyone has been able to join us for these meetings. We do post uh, these meetings, the recorded meetings on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube page. So uh, for anyone that wants to go back and listen to something uh, that was uh, said, or if you know someone that could not make it, uh, it is available uh, on those pages. We also are following up with as many return phone calls and emails as possible. Uh, because so some of you have very specific situations to your children and we are trying to work with them. So those students that have special needs, that is something that you know we are looking at individually. Uh, and that's something that we're gonna continue. Our seniors, um, folks, you know, You've got to feel for all of our kids. You really do. I mean, how much that they've experienced through this whole pandemic is just, it's numbing to me. 
Um, I would do anything to take it away from them, but this is our reality and, and we've got to push through this. But when you think of our seniors, I think of my seniors last year, uh, and, and I do believe we finished on a really high note with an amazing graduation and a, and a beautiful send off, but our seniors this year coming into, you know, with all the, uh, you know, all the things that they were looking forward to, and most importantly, you know, their, their academics. Uh, again, no secret, we have some really, really amazing, high achieving students, not some, um, a lot, many. Um, so our seniors, we are taking as individuals as well and saying, what do we need to do uh, again to make sure that their year is as good as it can be to prepare them for the next step. So with that, I thank you for coming. What the format will be is we'll keep you muted. Okay, that way, if there's anything going on in your back, it doesn't disturb us. Um, we understand you're, you, you got a lot going on, so we appreciate you just being here. If you have a question, you just go into the chat box. You can ask the question. We thank everybody. Uh, Ashita, good morning. Uh, Bonnie, hello and good morning. Uh, iPhone, good morning. Amy, good morning. So good morning to everyone. That's how you ask a question. Um, just go into the box as I just did right there. Mr. Gorham is going to ask the questions and one of us will answer the questions to the best of our ability. Okay. I just want to say one thing and then I'm going to let you do the, 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 the asking of questions. Because so, several people have said to me, you've been quoted in uh, some media outlets and we've heard you say that cyber is not for everyone, that most kids struggle. I'm going to stand behind those words. And as Mrs. Harris has worked with me in two other school districts, we will tell you, uh, and I've worked now over, over seven years very closely with our cyber students and our cyber programs and students do struggle and and it isn't for everyone okay that that's the typical experience that i've had but i've never gone through this through a pandemic i've never gone through this with, with the understanding that these are students that wouldn't traditionally go towards cyber programming because I've also said, and it needs to be very clear, that when you have family involvement, when you have people that are working together, that cyber programming could be the very best thing for students. And I've seen it save a lot of students and students that would have never graduated, students that would have never gone on to a post-secondary or a trade school or a military were able to get trauma from their school district because of cyber. So when I say it's not for everyone and that a lot of kids struggle, it's because the understanding of cyber is so new to so many of us. And even college students will tell you that when they first go into college and have their first online course, it's a struggle because you have to be independent, you have to be motivated. You, you cannot procrastinate. And if you do, you can't become overwhelmed when, when um, you fall behind. So I wanna make it clear because we, be, we are 100% behind your decision and we are doing everything to make your child successful because for most of you, you're coming back to the brick and mortar. So with that, I'm gonna let Mr. Gorham begin with his questions. Um, and again, thank you all. You hear me okay? Yep, we got you, John. All right, good, good, good. Hold on, let me get this up here. All right, so the first question is um, from Kevin Carpenter, and I think that um, Mrs. Laubach had looked that one up there. I don't know if she responded yet, but she she can look at the enrollment and make sure he's well, good I, to go. I could, uh, Kevin. I I know that you're good to go, um, without question. And All right. Eve, yeah, that was an easy one. Thank you. Yep. Um, and we'll follow up with you, Kevin, very very shortly. Uh, the next question is from Ashida. It says, if we opted to face-to-face -to -face learning now and if things change during the school year, 
is our child allowed to participate in online learning? So, you know, and, and I'll, I'll answer and, and I'd like anyone to, uh, of our team to get on this. So, so you absolutely are um, welcome to uh, come back now to the school. We, we, we are hoping uh, that you feel comfortable and that you and your, your child with taking precautions and understanding we're gonna have to do things a little different, wearing of masks, you know, uh, the way we uh, operate our, our transportation, the way we're going to eat lunch and do things of that nature uh, are gonna be different. But nonetheless, it's still gonna be face to face. And, and we think that we're in a position that we could be as uh, successful as possible and as safe as possible. Uh, yes, can you opt to leave? You can absolutely opt to leave. As Mr. Sarah and I talk almost daily about, we just want to make sure that you're leaving face to face and, and knowing that you are prepared to now stay in the cyber academy because bouncing back and forth is not good for your child. It, it, it's that consistency is not going to, to be conducive to a, a real good learning platform. In addition, those that go into our cyber academy, again, that you can opt out of it, but we really want you to, you know, look and, and see the supports that we have and that we're providing because nothing is really changing within our community, um, but you're struggling with the cyber component of us. I'd want you to really work with let us work with you and your child and see if we can help you overcome uh, those situations because it really will have an effect on our staffing. We're trying to keep the numbers as low in our school and we're obviously trying to maintain a very level um, enrollment in our, in our cyber, which as of this morning is just about at 500 total students in cyber. So I hope uh, that helps you, Ashita. The next question is from uh, Jack in Virginia. Uh, what will the symptom screening process for children attending brick and mortar school? Will there be temperature checks? Jack, thank you for that, that question. And th we will not be doing temperature checks. We are working and being guided by several, um, several medical personnel staff, infectious control uh, um, specialist, and amongst children, temperature checks are a very low mitigating um, response to this because we know in at least 40% of the, of, of the cases amongst children, they have no fever. Um, so we look at it as a very, uh, a false sense of security. What we're asking, and again, everything we do from now until COVID-19 is beyond us is it's got to be a team. It's got to be a unit of, uh, uh, of working together with our families. And we're going to give our families a checklist each and every morning for you to look at and talk to your children and make sure that they're feeling good and that they don't have any symptoms or things that you would see as being that's unusual. It has to begin at the home. People say, well, you know, families are going to do that. Again, we've never gone through a pandemic. We are trusting that through our, uh, through, through our communicating with the families that everybody understands just how vital this process is now. We believe the most successful way for us to combat this virus is by start, starting at home. And if your child has any symptoms, if our staff have symptoms, keep them at home. We will work to get them work. We will work to make sure they're caught up, uh, but that's the line of defense. The most important line of defense begins at home. Again, the temperature checks, um, you know, very, very low mitigating strategy to combat this. If a child does become sick in school or show symptoms, our nurses are obviously all trained uh, to handle uh, whatever the symptoms are. Uh, we will isolate the student until the family can come and uh, pick up the child. Uh, at that point, if the family 
believe that they should get their child tested. They will be tested. If there is a positive test, the Department of Health at that point will take over all the contact tracing. They will first notify the families, then they will notify the schools, and then there's a process. But that entire process is spearheaded by the Department of Health who are uh, hiring or have hired 1,000 contact tracers in the region. So I hope that helps uh, answer Jack and Virginia's question. Thank you. Um, good morning. This one's from Joseph Boyle. Good morning. My first question is, are my children, Michaela Krause, ninth grade, and Ian Krause, sixth grade, already enrolled in cyber? Or so I need to do something additional? So uh, if they're already, um, if they're already enrolled, and I know Christy can look to ensure that they are, if they are already enrolled, nope, you just sit tight. We are within less than two weeks away of making sure if you ordered Chromebooks that you get them. And then that's why, again, that, that date of the 11th is so important because there's a lot of law scheduling and logistics that need to go into play. So uh, thank you for enrolling. Michaela and uh, but there's nothing if they are enrolled and Christy will tell us if they are or maybe you could just let mom know privately yeah I, I'm just gonna if there's questions if people are enrolled I'm just answering those in the chat privately so you'll see on the yeah, bottom it's, it's the chat just to yeah. you thank you thank All you right. <laughs> Uh, the next question is from Bonnie Brisgant. Hello and good morning. My first question is, what will a typical school day consist of for sixth grade Cyber Academy student? Will there be live or virtual teachers or both? All right, well, thank goodness. Well, first of all, hello, Bonnie. Good morning to you as well. Happy Monday. At least now you can hear from somebody else and someone with such a much better presence and voice, Mr. Kevin Sayre. Kevin, if you like, we could, uh, we could reread that question. There we go. There you go. Thank you. Dave, you want to talk about the uh, the, li the live presence for the Crestwood Cyber Academy. Uh, we're in the process of creating schedules. Uh, it will be with the minimum guidelines uh, set. Uh, and sometimes I think the minimum guidelines misinformed. Uh, but the minimum guidelines is per content area. There'll be three live sessions a week. Um, so three times five is 15, plus we're planning on having related arts. Uh, so there's additional um, live times as well, but there, there will be a live schedule. It will be uh, rigorous. Uh, one of the things I always like to do at the beginning of these meetings is make sure we're all using the same language. The Crestwood Cyber Academy is not the same thing as what would happen to Crestwood School District if we have to go out of school for any reason and the entire school is learning from home. That's called distance learning. So distance learning is one thing, Crestwood Cyber Academy is another, and then of course we're coming back as face-to-face. -face. So I wanna make sure everyone keeps that in mind because the two, the two schedules will not be the same. There'll be a lot of similarities between the Crestwood Cyber Academy and what Crestwood School District could look like if we went out distance. Um, and if you're comparing it to what happened as of March 13th, that there, there will not be a lot of similarities. Uh, it will be a lot more rigorous. Attendance will be taken. Uh, we've had discussion uh, for the Crestwood Cyber Academy for students who are not able to be live. Um, that would be a concern for me as a parent if you're not able to be live, but that doesn't mean that you should exclude yourself. Uh, the preferred method is to be live every day. Did I hit all the parts of that question, Mr. Mahalik and Mr. Gore? Yes, I feel right. you did, and uh, and we'll let uh, we'll let Bonnie uh, follow up with that if she has any. But thank you again, Kev. Uh, the next question is from Jack in Virginia. In the event of a change in learning for brick and mortar students, what will a typical day of distance learning look like? Um, I could answer that one, and I'm not sure, Mr. Sarah, if you know if this is elementary or secondary. Um, 
it makes it makes a little bit of a difference if it's elementary or secondary, but not much. I can talk about what a typical day would look like um, on the secondary level. Um, basically, what Mr. Sayre had mentioned was it's uh, two to three live lessons um, per subject per week. Um, that's going to be very consistent on the secondary level for courses. Um, there's not um, a typical daily schedule. Um, like Mr. Sayre said, that they're creating schedules and it's going to be a little bit more structured on the elementary level. It's, it's not as structured on the secondary level. Um, the students have a little bit more flexibility, um, but the live components are still going to be there. Um, and we're working through that process now and teachers are creating courses um, as we speak. There's teachers in the building doing that now, but there is a lot more flexibility on the secondary level. Um, and we're also um, working through the process of, of trying to archive um, all of the live lessons as well so that you can go back for later reference on those. So the elementary level, now again, this question, if I'm understanding it correctly, is about distance learning, not about the Crestwood Cyber Academy. Uh, the distance learning schedules that have been created for elementary are every day, every class uh, schedules. Uh, students have four and five times that are hard times to be online. But if there's a block of time that's 45 minutes, it doesn't mean that the teacher is going to be directly instructing for 45 straight minutes. But at nine o'clock, my first grader is supposed to be on live with his or her teacher. The teacher might have a 15 minute direct instruction lesson and then free the children to go off in his or her direction, uh, doing meaningful guided and independent practice through all the resources that we've purchased. The teacher could remain live and if a child needs help, he or she could return to the teacher for that help. And there's also small group time uh, created within our schedule. So the, there's not just the live whole group times, but there's small group time. Uh, but the, one of the messages and, and my takeaways from March was that we need to make sure that we have a schedule in place in which people have some place to be so a teacher can also lead uh, our smaller K to six students to the content. They need assistance getting there. One of the other things we learned is before we start learning anything on distance, we have to learn how to learn on distance. Uh, and that's going to be something we need to do in the beginning of the school year because we need to be prepared to make this transition. So I've said at the beginning of these meetings, face to face in the elementary is going to have two priorities when we walk in the door. First and foremost is how to be, what are the new health and safety guidelines for our students? And the second thing is, what are we going to do when we have to transition to distance? So uh, that's going to be foremost on our list of things to accomplish when we get to school. Thank you. Um, the next question is from Lori. It's uh, if the pandemic is under better control after the first semester, will the children be able to go back to brick and mortar? Um, so I can answer that one. Um, if this pandemic is under control or if at any point you feel like um, your cyber experience isn't working out, um, you can switch back to brick and mortar fairly easily um, because you still remain a Crestwood student, which makes the process a, a lot easier. Um, Mr. Mahalik had mentioned earlier, I think, um, that you know we don't want to see students bouncing back and forth between the two, but if things improve, um, that would be a good time after the first semester at a semester break. That would make sense that you could switch back to brick and mortar. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about through this process is that we're attempting to align and we're working through the process of aligning our scope and sequence and our curriculum um, and teachers are, you know, working to, to make the, the, uh, the curriculum in the cyber um, very similar to the curriculum that the students will be learning in the brick and mortar. So the transition sh will be a lot smoother if you do come back. So that's a positive. The next question is, you want to add something, Mr. Mahal? Mr. Gorham, if I could just, again, jump into that. With that, and again, you, 
you touched on it, you know, those decisions, we, we want you to think really, really, uh, you know, r really long and hard about them because the consistency to your child is most important. And yes, especially in a typical year, the transition of moving back and forth will be very, very, your child will always be connected. And that was the entire intent of us enhancing and improving our cyber academy. We started by changing the name. Then we added Mr. Gorham's piece to this. And then we started bringing in, and all this happened before we even knew there was such a thing as COVID-19. So obviously we are gonna continue providing what we hope is the very best Crestwood Cyber Academy program that we can that we can for those traditional cyber students. But for right now, we know that this is beyond. We did a survey. I, I spoke to literally hundreds of you. A hybrid model or some sort of combination of reducing the amount of kids that were in school, many of you said, we're not comfortable because there is still the opportunity of infection. So that is where we really came about an option for this district because we know so many are not comfortable no matter what the circumstances is. You're not comfortable on the bus. <clears throat> You're not comfortable, and I apologize if you can't hear me well, might be my connection, but you're not comfortable on the bus. You're not comfortable in the lunchroom, in the hallways. So understand that if you are deciding to leave cyber to come back to us, let's have a conversation and see if we can help because there is probably nothing within the next 45 days that's going to make this country look much different than it looks today. I'm not a medical specialist, but I'm listening to them all the time. People that are really in the trenches, and it's probably a little bit longer than that until we start seeing some, some real situations are improving to the point where we're all gonna feel comfortable um, doing the things that we used to do. What is the link for the Cyber Academy enrollment? Um, I put the link in the chat for anybody who's looking for the link. So that link is in the chat. Um, how are we able to enroll in cyber if the decision is that? Once again, I put the link in the, in the chat. All you have to do is go into that link, um, answer a, a couple brief questions, um, and then you will very shortly receive a confirmation email from Mr. Mahalik. Um, and uh, after that, then you're enrolled in the Cyber Academy. So it's as simple as that. Uh, the next question is from Melissa. Can you explain the process more of what cyber looks like for a middle school and a high school? Do they have one cyber teacher teaching them every subject or will they have multiple Crestwood teachers teaching them different subjects? Uh, so I can answer that question. It's um, what we're doing now, like I had previously mentioned, is we have teachers um, coming in daily um, across the entire district. Um, they're, they're working on the Inventum platform. Um, they're building out the courses. Um, in the event that we do go to virtual learning, we can utilize that platform as well. But if, as far as for our cyber students right now, um, they're gonna be utilizing that, those um, courses that they're building on the Inventum platform. Every student that's in the Cyber Academy will have a different teacher um, per subject on the secondary level. So they will have a different specific content teacher um, for each subject on the secondary level. So that's grade seven through 12. Um, 
we're doing our best right now to staff uh, the entire cyber school, the entire Crestwood Cyber Academy with Crestwood teachers. Um, but that that's right now it's a staffing issue based on the numbers of uh, students that we have enrolled in the program. Um, there may be a possibility that we may have to have um, a few Edmentum teachers, which are Pennsylvania certified teachers in their content area. Uh, they may have to teach um, an occasional course, but right now we're, we're trying to do our best to staff the entire Cyber Academy with Crestwood teachers, uh, content specific, uh, Pennsylvania certified Crestwood teacher teaching in their content area. So that's our goal right now. The next uh, question is from an iPhone. It says, will you look to use the Cyber Academy as an interim solution for in-school students uh, during school closures? So, um, Mr. Sayer, you wanna answer this one? So I, I think I mentioned it previously that the Crestwood Cyber Academy is not what we go to in the event of a school closure. We go to our distance learning model and yes, we, we pull from a lot of the same resources, but they're not identical um, services and they're not identical offerings. There are a lot of similarities, you know, when you're using the same resources and you're working toward the same PA core standards and the Crestwood Cyber Academy is using a lot of Crestwood teachers who understand the path that we normally take. Uh, so there, there's, there's certainly a lot of feel and to, you know, to go back to the purpose of the Crestwood Cyber Academy, it, it has a lot of different purposes. It, it began uh, when Mr. Gorham was named the Cyber Academy principal to service our traditional cyber students, which by the way, last year Crestwood had 25 of our own traditional cyber students. It has evolved this year to, to accomplish a lot of purposes. One purpose is a bridge back to face-to-face -face learning for all the people that have enrolled. We believe that the 425 to 450 people that have enrolled do not intend on being cyber educated for the long haul in their educational careers. This is a bridge to when you feel like you can come back to our campuses safely. So I, I, I give some of this background because it's why we developed parts of our cyber academy to look the way it does for this year because we believe we're meeting the needs of what people want which is a connectivity to crestwood so when they do return it's as seamless as possible what i have to clarify to people is 2020 2021 will not be crestwood at the crestwood school district's banner year for education on the face-to-face -face level on the cyber level on whatever level there's so much unprecedented interruptions to learning that takes away from what we've practiced and perfected over the years. That doesn't mean that I promise you that we're going to do less or try, try less hard. It's just as an educational institution, you thrive on schedule, routine, and evolving slowly over time. You find me an educational institution that's jumping around from the, the latest, greatest thing over and over. I'll show you one that's struggling. So we have solid practices in place that we've perfected over the years. We are moving at a, at a breakneck speed to create a Crestwood Cyber Academy. I believe we're gonna do a great job. Uh, but make no mistake about it, we're developing it to feel Crestwood face-to-face -face like, but the distance learning option is literally created to mimic our day just at your home. So that's the slight subtle difference in the two. That was a little long-winded and I apologize, but I thought some backstory there. I do believe that the Crestwood Cyber Academy in 2021-22 won't look like it does in 2020-21 because there'll be far less enrollment. We'll be back to more of the traditional cyber approach, which families need for a lot of unique reasons. Thank you. All right, the next question is, let's see where we're at here. 
If our child, this is from Amy, if our child is enrolled in Cyber Academy, should we still send in the transportation sheet? If things better within the pandemic, are children who are in cyber able to return to school? So I, I if, if they're enrolled in, um, in the Cyber Academy, I would just put them as no, not needing transportation. Okay, and that obviously can change as well, but we are assigning seats specifically to those students coming on the buses. Uh, so you could just put no to that. Um, and I think the second part, John, you can um, answer. I know that we've probably touched on that. Yeah, the second part we had mentioned um, that if things get better, um, that you are able to return to the brick and mortar um, at, at any point. Um, but like we had said, we, you know, we don't um, encourage people to, you know, bounce back and forth between the two, but it is possible to switch back to brick and mortar if things improve. Uh, the next question is from Ismail, is Cyber Academy available for eighth grade? Um, this, the simple answer to that is that the Crestwood Cyber Academy is available to um, all grade levels, uh, kindergarten to 12th grade. So yes, it is available to eighth grade. Um, Bonnie Brisgant, uh, the next question is from Bonnie. How do you address tech uh, okay, technology slash server issues if something should occur during instruction and who do we contact for that? Uh, will the student be given extra time to complete assignments if that should happen? Um, so I can answer that. So um, normally during these, these meetings, um, our technology um, director is always on these meetings, but I can answer for him. Um, he's actually working on an issue with our server right now. So um, he's temporarily off of this meeting right now. But if there's an issue with technology, if there's an issue um, with anything with your Chromebook, um, you could email or reach out to myself. Um, you could reach out to our technology department um, send an email, phone call, whatever you can to get that resolved as quick as possible. Um, we're going to be the ones that are issuing um, the Chromebooks to the students. Um, so it'll be us that is going to be handling those issues in-house. Um, if there is an issue with technology, um, that, that would definitely um, allow you to have extra time to complete assignments if that should happen. Um, depending on what grade level you're at, um, if it's on the secondary level, um, like I said, there is some flexibility with the courses. Um, so if it's just that you're going to be down for a day, that shouldn't be an issue. But if it's for any length of time and it, and it does interfere with your learning, um, you know, we would reach out to the teachers and let them know that. Okay. The next question is from Ismail. Where can I find more detailed information about the schedule, curriculum, about the Cyber Academy? Is there a web page dedicated for Cyber Academy? Um, so I had, right underneath his message, I had created a link there for the enrollment. If we click on that, it should take you to the uh, Crestwood Cyber Enrollment form, but it'll also show you um, on the left side, there's a course offerings. There's going to be a link there for the Cyber Cafe. Um, there's, uh, and the, that'll be a good um, spot right there where we're going to put some information on the Cyber Academy throughout the year. So um, that's, that's where you can look for information on our webpage. If you go to the main webpage for Crestwood and you click on schools um, up on the top of the the choices scroll down to the Crestwood Cyber Academy. Uh, that's where you'll find that page. Uh, the next question is from Mehelos. Will the kids have books to work in along with the Chromebooks? So I'm not sure if this is elementary 
um, or if this is secondary. Um, that may have a slight difference in the answer, um, and Mr. Sayre is free to jump in here with the elementary response. Um, on the secondary level, uh, I can speak to this, that it's the entire program for, for cyber um, it is what we call web-based. So you don't technically need any materials such as books um, or anything of that nature. You, you can complete all of the coursework that you need to complete um, online. Um, if there is any supplement or any materials that, that need to be issued just by chance, if there's anything, since it is our courses and our teachers for the majority of the courses, if there's anything that that we wanted to distribute, you know, per class, that would be provided to the students. So that would be something that we provided, um, and that would be on an individual basis. There will be materials distribution in the elementary. It's it's important for our K to six students. The younger you go, to have something uh, physical, and tangible with them. So again, that's going to be when people are asking what the day would look like. Uh, it is very hard to paint the picture of what every single day would look like because it depends on the level of uh, the level of self sufficiency of, of, of each grade level can achieve and what kindergarten and first grade can do out of the gate is not going to look the same as what it would look like down the road but in those grades it's very important that the teacher have live interaction and it look and feel as much like the students are in front of him and her as possible you know one of our goals is going to be to not make the crestwood cyber academy be reliant upon the parents make no mistake about it kindergarten first and second grade is going to require parental support especially in the start uh, especially until routines are, are mastered and processes are in place that are efficient and effective so part of that comes out of the question, which is that's why resources, especially in the younger grades, are definitively necessary. Thank you. Uh, the next question was from Amy and um, Christy is going to respond to that in the private chat. How do we enroll for the Cyber Academy? That had previously been mentioned. If you didn't hear that part, um, I put the link to the enrollment form. So if you just click on that link, it should take you right to the enrollment form. If you're having, if anybody's having trouble with the enrollment form, um, simply send an email um, to any one of us that's on this meeting, anybody that's um, uh, on the team here or anybody that you can get in contact with and let them know you're interested in the Cyber Academy and we'll get you to the right place. Uh, the next question is from Wendy. Um, was wondering if the cyber school is gonna be like the previous online learning to where my kids were expected to go on about five different websites to complete their work. I'll speak to that a little bit. We have a number of different resources within our Crestwood Cyber Academy that can be utilized. And yes, they are all separate locations and require username and passwords. Part of a process when you develop something like this is, is we're mindful of it. We have to get organized right from the start and provide families with access to routine and procedure that organizes such information. Uh, there's there's always a better more effective way to do things, but the, the answer to that is yes, because just inside the Crestwood Cyber Academy in first grade, you have Connect Ed, Think Central, Edmentum Exact Path, MobyMax, Amplify. You have five potential places you may go. We have a plan in place to utilize Google Classroom as our hub and from there, you hyperlink to those different places. So again, in the, the spirit of getting organized and getting better, we have created a one-stop shop. We also know that we have to then house our grades somewhere. We have to house our assignments somewhere, and we still have our Skyward access. 
So I do understand and appreciate where that question came from, because as of March 13th, we were all of a sudden doing something we'd never done before, and we were trying to keep it meaningful, keep it engaging. And in order to do that, we tried a lot of different resources. Uh, so that practice that we had last spring has made us better prepared to manage that challenge moving forward. I would say this, that curse is also a blessing because you certainly want variety and resource to keep this as, uh, as outstanding as it possibly can be. The, the single resource would drive the kids crazy. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Ishmael. How many hours of live sessions per day in Cyber Academy? Um, so Mr. Sarah touched on that earlier in regards to the elementary. Um, and I can touch on that for the secondary. Um, what we typically say is uh, you know, two to three uh, live sessions per week, uh, per subject. Um, so in the time, the minimum time, you know, and we'd like to see the, our Crestwood teachers exceed this, the minimum time that, you know, cyber uh, learning um, says is a good amount of time online is uh, live sessions is about, um, well, correction. The, the, the amount of time per course that you should be working is about 45 minutes per course per day. As far as the live sessions, it's a little bit different. I apologize for that. Um, as far as the live sessions, that could vary. Um, it's not necessarily gonna be in hours, um, but it's gonna be in numbers of live sessions per week. So what we're gonna you know, push our teachers for is two to three per subject per week. But in terms of hours, um, you know, that would be unrealistic to say that we were going to have teachers doing hours and hours and hours of live sessions. And like Mr. Sarah had said, you know, that would bore the kids to death if they had to sit there and listen to, you know, to their teachers give live sessions. So it's, it's not going to be in terms of hours. It's going to be more of in terms of how many times they have live sessions per day, per week. And if Mr. Sarah wants to add to that, he could jump in, but I think we covered yeah. everything there. I think it's a good idea to give people some perspective, maybe. Mm -hmm. So just uh, let's look at third grade last year. A third grade student had direct instruction, you know, when your content is being delivered to you. Uh, approximately for three to four hours. However, inside that time is what's called facilitated learning. You have comment time. You have your specials, recess, lunch. So I think it's important to consider the compare an apple to an apple. When we're talking about looking forward now to Crestwood Cyber Academy, if you're asking about live time in which someone is interacting in a Google Meet face to face with their educator versus time in which now I'm a student who's off inside the resource getting meaningful engagement. You have to remember what your, your distance resources look like, your cyber resources look like. When I'm interacting with a text in a cyber format, there's questions along the way. It can reread it for you. If you get something wrong, it automatically defaults to a reteach. So I don't know what you consider that time or, and, and to frame these questions, Questions, are you looking to know how much time will there be face-to-face -face interaction log in time with that human being versus how much time then will my child be in front of a computer screen working through content so um, these questions there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of subtlety in, inside these questions a lot of context inside these questions and I don't want to misinform anybody you know communication is great and we're doing a lot of communication as Crestwood School District and one of the things I've learned about communication is you do just as much miscommunication as you do effective communication in forums like this. So uh, I, I just want to make sure we're answering the spirit and the heart of that question, which is, are you looking to know this face to face like this? Or are you looking to know the amount of time someone should spend on a computer in a given day? So uh, I, I hope I'm helping to clear some of the things up 
And by all means, just put right back into the chat. Uh, nope, try again. All right, thank you. Um, will music, art, and band instruction in cyber still be held? And that question is from Lori Lukashevsky. I'm not sure if she's speaking about um, elementary or if that's a secondary question. Um, I'm, if it's if it's a question on the secondary um, level, um, we are looking, like I said, to staff all of our courses, um, all of the the course requests that students had put in. Um, you know, we're looking to provide all of those opportunities for students, whether it be music, art, um, physical education, um, all of those courses, we're looking to staff those with Crestwood teachers the best we can. Um, as far as band instruction, um, Mr. Mahalik, I'm not sure if you want to jump in on this one as well. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't see us being able to deliver band instruction uh, via the Cyber Academy. Now, when things clean up, clear up, you know, are, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, it's like every other word. It, it's it's choppy. Let me let me stop my video and see if that makes a difference. Is that a little better, John? Yeah. Okay. Let me I try. Everyone, yeah, I don't see band instruction being a possibility, at least for this year. Um, in the future, that may be a possibility. Uh, in fact, I'm going to say it probably will be a possibility. But for this year, with the sheer number of students, uh, it, being able to deliver band instruction uh, is not going to, to be possible. Now, in elementary, uh, and I'll let Mr. Sayre speak to our elementary related arts. We have plans for music and art and physical education will be done through journaling and, and be very much self-guided. Uh, but we plan for live music and art uh, delivered by one, by one person uh, to all of our K to six. So the frequency of which that happens, uh, we still uh, have to map out and is still in the construction phase. Thank you. Um, the next question says, uh, good morning. This is from Jennifer. Um, what is a typical day like? Would the kids be sitting in front of a computer all day? Um, and I, and I, I'm not sure if you want to, you know, put in the chat a, a little bit more specific question is that we had touched on, we had touched on, um, I'm in a meeting. Um, we had touched on, um, you know, what the, what a day looks like um, on the secondary level, um, and Mr. Sarah ha had touched on the, you know, the different platforms that they're going to use on the elementary level. Um, if you want to message again a little bit more specific of a question, you know, we can elaborate on that. Um, on the secondary level, no, I will say that there is a lot more flexibility with the program. Um, so the, the students will not necessarily be sitting in front of a computer all day. Um, there's opportunities for uh, independent learning. Um, you know, the teachers might present a, a short 10 or 15 minute lesson, and then there's time for the students to work independently, work on their own, um, and do work, um, just like it would be if they were in a brick and mortar setting. So it's not all sitting in front of a computer necessarily watching uh, live lessons all day. Um, the next question is, will the cyber kids be able to participate in school activities? Um, so I can, I can answer that. Um, and I, and I'm not sure whether this is specific to elementary or secondary, but I'll, I'll answer it from a secondary perspective. Um, it could be a slightly different answer. So 
cyber students are able to participate in um, sports um, on the secondary campus um, and you know any other activities that we offer you know sports is it was one that comes up quite frequently um, but within reason you know we have to be um, be aware of the social distancing factor um, and a lot of the students that chose the cyber um, the and the families that chose it chose it for the reason that they're fearful during this pandemic of coming back to school um, so a lot of the activities are going to be, you know, difficult for us to, to manage um, those aspects. So, um, you know, within reason, you want to be careful of what activities you choose to allow your students to be part of, but they are welcome to be part of any activities that we do offer on the secondary campus. Um, they are able to be part of the Crestwood, um, you know, the the Crestwood family, they're, they're still a Crestwood student, so they're welcome with all of those activities. Uh, the next question is from Bonnie Brisgant. Will there be much homework assigned on the Cyber Academy? And do the other teachers see what homework was assigned from other teachers so they don't over assign or overwhelm the student? Will they have enough time to complete each teacher's homework assignments? Um, I, I can answer that one. Um, you know, and, and Mr. Sayre can answer that one from an elementary perspective. And, you know, the, the, the teachers on the secondary campus, um, they're in they're in close communication all the time this would be very similar to the brick and mortar setting so you know it is typical for students you know within our district to receive homework i mean you know our, our achievement levels are very high um, the rigor that we want um, the students to have during the cyber academy um, you know we want it to be rigorous we want the students to be working we want the students to you know to be learning and achieving so there will be homework i can't say how much homework there they will be assigned um, that's going to be based on individual teachers um, individual courses um, but the, the teachers certainly are in communication um, you know with each other um, the mm -hmm. teachers will be you know given the, the students ample amount of time to finish those assignments um, if it's if it's something that you know you feel has become a, an issue or a concern, you can certainly reach out to me, and I'll you know I'll follow up with the teachers and and see where we stand. But you know the students will be working, um, it will be rigorous, and they will be challenged. Uh, the next question is from an iPhone. It says, "I know it must be difficult to determine the spacing for the in-person students." Um, until you definitively know the numbers for in-school versus cyber, do you have an ideal feel for spacing set up for in-school yet? Yeah, not, good question. At this point, it's looking like three and a half feet is uh, the least amount of space we're going to have available. Uh, some spots, it's less than that, like in our computer rooms. And in those cases, we have uh, purchased uh, plastic sh uh, shields, debaters between each computer on each side of the student. So uh, again, we're going to, uh, you know, attempt and, and to, to the iPhone's point, yeah, when we get the actual, number of students that are out of the district and that is you know that's why we had that 11th as a cutoff uh that will really help us to gauge what the classrooms look like and really uh you know go into our staffing so much greater so in those areas computer labs especially on the secondary level where we, we know it's impossible those computers are locked in pre-wired uh hardwired you know, we're going to do the shields amongst uh, both sides of the students. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Ashida 
Um, it says, will there be a compressed schedule for the school year, at least for the fall, both face-to-face -face and online? Uh, our schedule will be will be the same same as it's been. Yeah, I'm not sure, Ashita. You know what the specifics of your question are. If you want to repost that in the chat, um, I'm going to take a swing at that one if I could. So one of the questions, you know, face to face, our schedule is our schedule. We we're we're maintaining, but our distance schedule uh, in terms of compression, we obviously have had conversations and have built these distance schedules. For instance, while we're trying to mimic, there has to be facets to that, that, you know, it's not gonna be an identical schedule. So for instance, most of the elementary students, uh, their online schedule times occur between nine and two, because after two o'clock is small group and office hours. We learned in the fall that we have to have time in order to individually sort things out and work with students. So we've had discussion at the secondary campus about running some sort of a delay schedule as well. If we have to go to distance learning to allow teachers to have response time and, uh, you know, troubleshooting and, and all the necessary things that go into making distance learning successful. So there could be a shorter time window within the day on the distance learning schedule in which your live presence is. It won't stretch out from the secondary campus. I think you walk in the door at 7.15, you walk out the door at 2.35. It won't be stretched out along all those hours. It'll be, the live time uh, will be in, a, in it, that will be compacted a little bit. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Steve. Is distance learning only available if the school or specific classroom is closed? What specific enhancements will be made to distance learning from how it operated last school year? Uh, again, I don't know if Steve's a secondary campus parent or an elementary campus parent, but I, I believe I've covered all that already, Steve, if you wouldn't mind throwing into the chat whether or not you agree with me. Uh, if you don't agree with me and you'd like me to revisit pieces of that, we'll certainly come back to that, okay? But yeah, it's, the, there's the only, oh, thank you. So the only thing uh, that's gonna look similar from the spring to now is that we'll be, if we are distance, we'll be at home. Um, iPhone said that really helped. Thank you. Um, let's see, Stacy. For social distancing school, what would a normal week look like? Five days a week, compressed times, Um, it looks like, uh, the question is asking, um, what our schedule will look like, whether we'll use compressed times, whether we use a, a compressed schedule, how many days a week, um, and Mr. has Mr. Mahalik had just mentioned, um, and we all have mentioned that our Schedule is going to be just like it has been in the past. Um, our brick and mortar um, schedule is going to be five days a week with um, our consistent start and end times from previous years. So there's going to be no compressed schedule at this time. This question is going to be for, for Mr. Sayre. If I have twins that are starting kindergarten together, would they be aligned with the same teacher and schedule? P parents of twins at the elementary level are always permitted to request together or separate. Uh, so if you put your teachers, put your student together face to face, they'll have the same teacher. If you're going to the Crestwood Cyber Academy, they would be on the same schedule if you request for them to be uh, 
together. Thank you. Um, my student has her own laptop. Does she need a Chromebook too? That question was from Barbara. Um, I can answer this, um, Mr. Mahalik. You can you can answer this one as well. I know that you like to answer the the Chromebook questions. Thank you. Uh, you got it. Can you can you hear me? Okay, John. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yes, yo. If you have your own setup, if you have your own station, you know, please let let your children use that. That that's wonderful. Uh, it will be compatible. And you know what we're asking our families that if you have a situation where you do not need our Chromebook, um, please, you, you know, we, we appreciate that. You don't need to take it just to take it uh, because we don't have a limited supply, an unlimited supply of Chromebooks and we are trying to get as close as we can to one-to-one. -to -one. Now, if you need it, please do not feel like you're putting us out or anything like that. We're prepared to give them to you, but if you do not need it, uh, then, then yes, you could use your own setup. It's compatible. Any type of laptop that you may prefer. Um, Apple products, uh, obviously, uh, PCs, whatever it is. Uh, the, um, the one of our parents, and, and most of you are probably much more techie than me, uh, but John and, and Kevin will tell you that uh, one of our parents found a certain app for their iPad that really lets them use the iPad like a, you, you know, like a computer with a full keypad and things of that nature. iPads to me are a bit clumsy, uh, not just for our program, for any program that you're doing a lot, a lot of uh, texting or, you know, uh, or, or writing in, but uh, we did have a parent uh, show, show us about a special app that iPad has. So um, I hope that helps. And please, if you need follow up on that as well, I could connect you to our director of technology or Mr. Gorham, who again is much more, uh, much better at these than me. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Jack in Virginia. As a follow-up to my prior question, can you please elaborate as to how the day will look for elementary school students, specifically second, fourth, and fifth grade? How is the day different from distance learning versus cyber academy? It was stated that distance learning will mimic the typical brick and mortar day, but what does that specifically mean? Will it be a synchronized day or asynchronous day or a hybrid? Can you go into more detail how new material will be presented for elementary students? So, and I don't know how many of these points I've already hit on. The best difference between distance and cyber, no one is choosing to be a distance student. So we are going to do more hand-holding there, do more, have more of a presence as a whole group class, and then the children, while I'm the teacher, may go off and do their guided practice. I'm there for them to come back to, and I'm going to try as a distance learning teacher at the elementary to accomplish everything I can in whatever window I'm given on the schedule. As a Crestwood Cyber Academy teacher, I'm gonna be there in a live presence, but I have these resources that are intended for students to be able to take him or herself through that reteach and enrich. They're actually called adaptive, meaning they know if you get something wrong and they know if you get something right, uh, and they adjust to the student for that. So it is, it's, the Cyber Academy students are meant to be there for the full year. The distance learning is meant as a short-term solution to a problem. Mr. Mahalik explained, we're in school for two weeks, we've gotta be out for five days. So how can we not lose continuity and still maintain 
meaningful education till we return back and then we're out for another month so it's 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 meant to try to mimic for the reason that what is its purpose explaining to what the average day looks like I, again i tried to provide the example before you have to realize that our elementary students are in this building for six hours and 55 minutes of that six hours and 55 minutes four hours is teachers actually delivering content and as a person who observes teachers if i see them talking at the students for all four hours i have a big issue that's not excellence in, in education uh, i keep referring to it as direct instruction if you think of direct instruction that's the time period in which a teacher is trying to deliver new material to the students the students then have to take that material and work with it him or herself that's called independent practice or guided practice so when you look at those concepts in, a, in the cyber world you're talking about best practice should look like one and a half hours to two hours a day of new instruction spaced out in a palatable manner depending on the student's individual grade level so you asked about it in second fourth fifth it could look different for each one because second grade is going to have one teacher fourth and fifth is going to have a departmentalized approach uh, so that fourth and fifth schedule will look more like set times for each content area whereas the second grade teacher is going to use a lot of small group within their day in a small group scenario you get more what you need depending on what you need if your child is really good at going through and navigating the resources on his or her own once given the direction it could look like less time than another second grade child i have to provide you with some generalized answers at this time because it's it, there's a different answer for each grade level there's also different answers for how individual students take to the cyber approach Thank you. Uh, this question is from Amy. When will the Cyber Academy students enrolled in Crestwood Cyber get the Chromebook and will books and supplies be supplied for elementary students? Um, go ahead, Mr. Sayer. You want to take this one as far as supplies for the elementary students? Yeah, we're going to do a supply distribution. I, I mentioned that that previously. Uh, we have workbooks purchased that go along with some of the resources I spoke about earlier. Um, and depending on the grade level, it will depend on the amount of actual resource we send home. But there will be some form of tangible resource sent home K to six. Thank you. And as far as the uh, Chromebooks, um we're setting up a schedule um to distribute the chromebooks that the the first round of distribution should be coming sometime within the next couple days so just uh, sit tight we'll be getting that schedule out to everyone when you could uh pick up your chromebooks it should be coming up this week uh, the next question is from jennifer uh, what will the physical distancing and safety measures be like in the brick and mortar elementary schools, class size, et cetera? Yeah, I'll answer this, Mr. Gorham. So we, uh, again, you, you know, depending on the amount of students, that's going to determine the uh, space we have in the classrooms. Mr. Sarah, myself, and a group of uh, teachers have began that process looking specifically at a classroom. Most of our classrooms are the same uh, space uh, uh, per square foot. So looking at 24 students being in a classroom, you would have uh, about three and a half feet uh, per student. Um, in addition to that, whenever they are going to lunch or areas like uh, well, lunch and breakfast, we will have them in a, a position where they will be more than six feet apart 
from their classmates or anyone uh, so that they can eat, obviously, uh, with, without any inconvenience. We are going to utilize the outdoors more frequently, not all the time, as much as possible in larger spaces. Uh, we're going to, again, have to just really maximize every ounce of our buildings. Uh, we know that coming on the buses, we're going to have two kids per seat. We know that's, you know, an area that we're concerned about. However, what we're going to require is masks on the bus. <laughs> masks. In the school, face coverings uh, will be able to be worn. That is made more comfortable to the kids. We will have face shields available to the kids. <clears throat> so it's going to be what our students are most comfortable with. And I just want it to be known that even if there is more than six feet in a classroom, you still need to have a face covering on. So when you're indoors, you need to have a face covering on. The six feet, which again, the CDC has scaled back from uh, and the Department of Health, that is definitely the re recommendation, uh, but it's also where you can and, and how you best can. But the mask will need to be worn no matter what. We will take them off when they obviously are eating uh, or things of that nature. So I hope that helps. Again, we're going to constantly be reinforcing um, masks on, hands to herself. Um, all the things that, that we're going to do to try to keep our kids as socially distanced uh, as possible. We know it's going to be difficult because, um, and I don't mean this in general to Crestwood, but a lot of our students are not wearing masks when they're out on the playgrounds, when they're uh, at the parks and all the different places. Again, I'm not generalizing specifically to Crestwood, in general, <clears throat> as I drive by places. So this mask, you, you know, uh, uh, requirement is going to be new for a lot of our students. And it's gonna be a, a, a bit of a change of what they're doing all day long. Uh, and they may not understand the dire importance of this. Uh, so we're going to reinforce it constantly. And we're gonna ask families, please reinforce this um, because it is, is one of those uh, ways to minimize any spread of this virus. All right, thank you. The next question is from Steve. It says, I realize things are very dynamic, but for brick and mortar education, what is the policy for face masks? What are the exceptions? Will any activities instructions be temporarily discontinued or handled significantly different? Recess, phys ed, music, lunch, et cetera. So masks are going to be required. Um, and we, you know, are, are gonna again, stress and educate how important that is. Uh, we are going to continue to look at all the areas of our school and we want to obviously uh, have kids participating in phys ed and recess in those areas as much as we can outdoors uh, because we know that outdoors is, is definitely um, a much lower uh, threat to spreading any sort of germs or, or contamination. Um, I, again, we, we, we just are going to need to stress that our our students are following the orders, um, and I know it's going to take a lot. But together, if if administration and faculty and staff are saying it, and families are saying it, it's just got to become a part of their regular routine until this until this passes us. I hope that answers the question to the best, and if any like to jump in, please do.
Okay, John, you could take it from there. Yeah, I'm trying to find where I'm at here. Let's see, okay. Um, how are tests administered through the Cyber Academy? Also, will sophomores still have the option to take the PSAT if they are enrolled in cyber? Um, so like I had previously mentioned, um, you know, tests will be um, administered through the Cyber Academy based on individual teachers. Um, every, every teacher, you know, has the ability to handle their class the way they would like to. It'll be, you know, similar to how it is on the, uh, in the brick and mortar setting. Um, you know, on the, the same type of, uh, you know, amount of tests per quarter and per year will be very similar, but every teacher will handle that a little bit differently. Um, also, the, the PSATs, um, you know, students um, who are in the Cyber Academy are welcome to take the PSATs. Um, they could, uh, if we're offering them here, they could come in, take them. They can take them at another, another location. So they are, they are able to take the PSATs if they're in the cyber academy. Um, the next one is from Antonella. Good morning all. Will high school students stay in the same classrooms or are they allowed to transit from one class to another? Um, so on the secondary campus um, in, 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 in any secondary setting, you know, it's very difficult um, to move um, the teachers as opposed to the students um, because individual student schedules vary so greatly. Um, we don't have what you would call a, you know, a typical cohort of students that travels together all day. Um, everybody takes their own content, you know, specific courses and everybody's schedules different. So uh, the students will be moving um, throughout the hallways. Um, and they will be transitioning from class to class. Uh, the next question is from the Carpenter family. I assume live time will not have a student scheduled for two different course live times at the same time. Um, uh, on the elementary level, that, that, that's an easy answer. Um, unless there's uh, some grade levels that are going to be departmentalized um, and they would not have the same live time um, as the other teacher um, on the secondary level. Um, that, you know, that's something that we're going to have to work through the process um, and, the, and lots of communication is going to take place, but, you know, we will not be offering live uh, sessions at the same time. Um, so that students have the opportunity to be present in all of those. Um, the next question is not a question. It says, Principal Sarah, address that for me. Thank you. Um, in light of Governor Wolf, this question is from Laura. In light of Governor Wolf's recommendation that K through 12 sports not occur until January 21st, will Crest would be having fall sports? Um, so uh, Crestwood right now, um, has not changed their stance on sports at this point. There has been no, no decisions have been made, um, no changes to, to the previous um, plan prior to the governor's announcement. Um, the PIAA has announced that they are going to wait two weeks um, and have communication with the governor's office. Um, so at this point, there has been no change um, as far as sports at the Crestwood School District. Um, the next one is from Bonnie Brisgen. You, uh, you for your time in answering my question. That's all for me today. I appreciate all you're doing. Thank you again. Have a good day and week ahead. Thank you, Bonnie, from everybody. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to discuss from iPhone. Thank you for being part of our meeting. Um, Ashita says, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Lots of thank you. So we thank you guys as well. Thank you for being part of, a part of this Zoom meeting. It's helpful that we have good communication with, with the parents as well. So thank you to everyone. Um, John, may I just go back to, to Jack and Virginia's question? Because I don't think uh, is there any plan in place for brick and mortar students to have breaks where masks can be removed? Uh, I don't know that I 
answer that. I, I, Kevin, did you, were you able to answer that? Which, which question? Let me see. I don't, I didn't. Jack in Virginia asked, is there any plan in place for the brick and mortar students to break where masks can be removed? So I, I think I gave an answer, but I don't know if it was direct enough. I apologize to Jack and Virginia. Yeah, the, again, we are going to utilize the outdoors, you know, as frequently as possible. Uh, phys ed classes will be outdoors, recess outdoors. Anytime we can, uh, you know, get to the outdoors, we, we certainly will. For parents worried about the safety and security of being outdoors, we've always utilized the outdoors on all of our campuses. Each of our campus has security. Um, so that's, that's not, this is not a new process, uh, but it just may be that it's more frequent. Uh, there are nobody allowed on our uh, campus during the school day. So those that like to walk and exercise, we certainly enjoy opening that up to our public. And, and um, but that's not something that, uh, is allowed during the school day. So, um, so yes, we are going to, you know, look at uh, utilizing the outdoors as much as we can. And in terms of visitors to the school, again, we're going to be restricting visitors to the school. Uh, if you need to pick up your child or drop something off, you will do all that at the front of uh, the entrance. If there is a reason for you to have to come into the school, and there are going to be times that there's an essential visit needed, uh, then we will certainly make sure you're masked, escort you in and, and escort you back out when, when that is over. Um, all meetings will be virtual next year. So parent meetings, uh, those type of uh, things that we normally did face to face. Uh, and again, we're gonna look at how we hold uh, open houses, meet the teachers, and things of that nature. Uh, there will be no uh, activities going on in our schools. You know, we closed down the rental process of the district for this year, or at least until we are in a better position to uh, to say that, okay, we, we can now open that back up. So, you know, there are a lot of steps that we are taking and will continue to take uh, to try to minimize this to the greatest, you know, possible extent, uh, knowing that, you know, things are going to happen. And I don't know that any of us should believe that if we do have a positive case, that that's a failure of the school district. I do not, I won't look at it like that. And I don't think we can, because we know um, that that is likely going to happen. It is minimizing uh, how often that happens and how much of a spread that there is. Thank you. Um, let's see, the next question is, I'm skipping over a lot because there's a lot of thank yous. Uh, we you we appreciate, and you said this already, Mr. Rowe, we appreciate every one of those thank yous because we, again, are doing this because of knowing how many questions and how much uncertainty you have. Um, this is not a task for us. This is not, oh, we've got to do another one of these. We've got to answer that question again. It's not that. It's wanting every single one of our, our public, our 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 parents to have their question answered. And if I have to answer the same question 685 times, then that's what it's going to take. You deserve that. And, you know, we're, we're, we're prepared to do that because it's important for you to feel as comfortable as possible. Um, so again, that's why I'm so thankful to my staff. Um, and I'm thankful to you, our families, for your patience, flexibility, and understanding that there's no, you know, there's no playbook for this. We can't look back on, well, how did we do this last time? You know, you know there's really just us putting our heads and hearts together and knowing that we don't want any kid or any staff member 
to be in any greater risk than they need to be. But we also don't want anyone to, to, to miss out on some of the important academics. And, and that's such a great balance. And I think, again, Mr. Sayre said it, said it wonderfully before that, you know, it's not going to be like it was, uh, but it's going to be the best that it can be. And there is not a better cyber option for you because this team is, is so, so invested in your child and their outcome. They're not a number. They're not a name. They're not a paycheck. They're our students and we care so deeply about getting us all through this and putting us together again in, a, in our traditional school set where we all just are, are worrying about what's for lunch today. And man, I really don't like their chicken nuggets. I gotta bring my own. I can't wait to that day again. But until then, we're with you every step of the way. There's, a, there's another question that I missed. Um, what about students enrolling in cyber that want to go to VoTech? So Amy, I can, I, I can say to you that um, the students that are, that are our VoTech students um, are definitely welcome to be part of the Cyber Academy, um, as well as um, taking part in any, any programming that VoTech has to offer. Um, Mr. Mahalik and myself have a meeting tomorrow morning um, with the with all of the directors and the principal from the Votex, so we're going to have very you know specific and clear guidance as to what that process is going to look like with Votech. Um, at this point, we understand that they're they're going to be having traditional you know schooling at the Votech, but we'll have some some more answers tomorrow. So if you want to reach out to us privately through email or a phone call. Um, you know, sometime tomorrow or later in the week, um, we, we can answer any questions you might have about that. But you, you definitely have the opportunity to be part of Votech and the Cyber Academy. So that's all for the questions, uh, Mr. Mahalik. Um, just a lot of thank yous. Um, and like uh, Mr. Mahalik had said, we, we thank you for your time as well. Um, um, think if anybody has any follow-up questions to the meeting, um, they're welcome to reach out to any one of us on, on the team. Um, and this meeting is going to be recorded and posted um, on our website, I believe, and on Facebook, I, on Facebook too, Mr. Mahalik. Yes, um, it'll be on, on Facebook as it'll well. It'll be on Facebook. So if anybody you knows anybody who missed the meeting or wants to go back and watch any of the previous meetings, they're on Facebook. Um, so at this time, I believe that we're finished um, with the questions. Um, so thank you to everybody. And uh, we're going to end the meeting now. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you.